Hello guys and welcome. If you're watching this, it means you are done with the introductory part of 400 level. By that I mean you have done your nursing posting, your intro A, your intro B and um, your introduction to pathology. So now it's time for M1S1. Welcome. My name is Dr. Peter and I'm going to be your university guide through medical school. By the way, there is another video on medicine. If you've not seen that, you should try and see it before you start your medicine posting. So welcome to clinic house. You know, most of us were inspired. We wanted to be surgeons. We wanted to be your surgeons when we were coming. You know, when we got into medical school at first. So this, this is it. Welcome. This is it. However, there are a few things I want you to be aware of, even as you start your your, your posting, your surgery posting. So welcome, guys. Um, this will be you know your intro into surgical practice. For those of us that will be surgeons in the long run, and those of us that will be doctors, I mean, all of us that will be doctors, not those. Anyway, this will be your introduction to surgery. And I want you to have a beautiful experience. And the way you can go about it is if you follow some guidelines. Let me start off with safety, because that's very important. You are going to be joining doctors in the hospital, partaking in clinical activities. I want you to take care of yourself. I want you to take care of yourself. So you're in the wardrobe, ward for example, and I've seen this as a part of warning before we even go into the details. You don't take your, your school bag, your backpack to the ward. Don't do it. You're going to carry staff orios, MRSA, and you're going to take it in your hostel. You understand? So you don't do that. You don't take your bag to the ward. Try and differentiate your ward coat from your clothes. You understand and there is nothing bad with using an antiseptic to wash your things now because you want to stay safe when you're going to the world use your face mask use every protective gear that you can that you have at your disposal very important also when you are asked to examine a patient because you would have to examine patients from time to time make sure make sure that you are putting on your gloves and when you're done dispose them off be careful that's what i'm talking about in the hospital the germs the pathogens in the hospital are you know they are on a higher level. They are not the ones you got from the community. They are on a higher level. Anyway, but putting safety at the side of our mind down to the posting. S1 is an eight-week posting. It's an eight-week program in surgery. And, and you are going to be doing it concurrently with medicine. So you're going to be taking it um, alongside. At the end of 16 weeks, that's when you're going to have your exam. Now, some of you might be feeling that this is that 16 weeks in between 400 level where you coast. Ladies and gentlemen, let me scare you a bit because statistically speaking surgery is the worst course in your s3 in your finals your part three finals at the end of medical school we have found out that over the years surgery has the lowest pass mark and the reason why because the surgical undergraduate curriculum is large it's large and if you start coasting from s1 you're going to coast for a very long time and there will be no recovery period and i can tell you that the pass rate for surgery is not is it's not bad because surgeons want to be bad necessarily. It's because actually the storm is much and starting in S1 is the best way to go about it. Don't just coast through the 16 weeks. That is the bottom line of this whole grammar. Now, down to um, the ball game. By now, you should have gotten your timetable, which is going to have about 40 topics. You understand? And most of them will be introduction, introduction to social surgery, introduction to, you know, all the subspecialties in surgery. Um, Get that timetable, you know, write out the topic in the first page of your notes. It's important so that you can track your progress between the 16 weeks because you're going to be taking surgical and medical lectures concurrently or not, depending on how they want to make the arrangement. But get a list of all the topics and read them accordingly. Now, since we're talking about stuff, I can also tell you that the best source of stuff, let me tell you, the sources of stuff you can have for your surgery posting. Every clinician, when you're starting clinical medicine, they will tell you to go back and read the first three chapters of Clinical Methods by Hutchinson. It's a beautiful book. The first three chapters are fun to read. There is no stuff they say inside, but it's going to you know, give you a very strong idea of what we do in the hospital as doctors. So you're going to be learning you know, um, physician-patient relationship. You're going to be learning how to clerk and then how to do examinations all within the confines of the first three chapters of that book so it's important that you go through it some surgeons will even recommend that you go to other you know more um, surgically specific books such as hamilton bailey and all that and all that but suffice to say that the first three chapters of Hutchinson is very very important now it's not it's not part of the exam but it's important in real life i hope you understand what i mean by that now so to you know more like concrete stuff now sources of stuff you know, you have textbooks such as Bailey and Love, such um, the short surgical practice by Bailey and Love. You have, you know, a um, textbook of tropical surgery 
um, by Anthology, um, the famous Baja or Jaja book, as you might know. Some people call it Baja, others call it Jaja. But um, it's, a, it's an African text which is actually quite huge. It has two volumes, um, which well is very applicable in tropic in the tropics where where we live. So it's a very good source of stuff. Now, besides all these big source of stuff, now, if you want cogent clinical stuff. Where you're going to get it from, the best source I found it from was in Churchill's Handbook of Surgery. Churchill's Handbook of Surgery. If you want to use, if you have limited funds and you want to buy one textbook, I suggest you buy Churchill's Handbook of Surgery. Why am I, why is it so beautiful? It's concise, it's small enough, you can finish it in the time allotted. It has enough stuff for you to pass your exam and also have a very strong understanding of surgery. And it's beautifully illustrated too. Which is a bonus point. So, surgical, um, this um, Church Hills Handbook of Surgery, beautiful book. If you want to use the Oxford Surgery, fine and good, but strongly suggested Church Hills Handbook of Surgery. The reason why I'm saying this so much is because I used to pass surgery averagely. I used to read the big books and I used to pass averagely. And then when I started using Church Hills book, you know, my marks really multiplied. And I'm talking about 10 mark increase in surgery, which is not very common if you understand what I'm talking about. So, five star on. Churchill's Handbook of Surgery. I think I said it so much times that I repeat. You by now you should know what I'm talking about. Now, moving on to more sorts of stuff. Um, you need a handbook of surgery. Something you know. There are so many tiny details that um, a clinician cannot sit down and teach you from start to finish. And the best source of that what we call on the go stuff is the little, the small surgical handbooks, particularly the guides. And I'm talking about. It's a small, it's small enough, it's common enough. I know you have heard of it. The guide is a beautiful textbook to put in, put in your word code pocket as you move around. All the um, on the go stuff they're going to ask you in word rounds. The answers will be in there. And more so, it's actually very important for the exam. So let me put it um, in terms of hierarchy, so you know what I'm talking about. Of course, your lecturers will give you a uh, material. Church's handbook of clinical medicine. Church's handbook of surgery. The guide. I have those two up there like oxygen let it be high up there in your priority list then for your references you can read one of the books either you choose Bailey and Love or you choose Jaja or whatever other Hamilton Bailey or whatever other um, source of surgical textbook that you think you'll be comfortable with so those are very 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 important those two that I mentioned earlier now let me tell you about the exams surgery exams the surgery exam is um, the multiple choice question in surgery. I, there is no definite number, it varies from time to time. However, I can tell you that it's plenty. And the time allotted for the exam will likely be just adequate for the exam. What I mean by that is that there will be no time to sit down and then just you know relax and just watch the clock tick in the exam hall. You have to be on your on your toes throughout the exam. So the time allotted for the exam is just enough for it. That's for the multiple choice questions. For the short for the um, short answer questions, you will likely have 10. Um, questions in an hour so you at the end of the day you might be having six minutes per question or roughly eight to ten minutes per question and these are questions that might require to write a full page i mean a full page in terms of answering the questions so there is no time you have i want you to be aware that in surgery you have to be on top of your game when it, time, when it comes to speed very very important now moving on still part of the exam um practicing you know practicing questions Practicing um, surgery past questions will, will help you to be able to imagine how the exam is going to go like. It's something um, you can also do uh, as part of the exam. Now, um, let me put the exams aside a little and tell, talk about your clinical skills. You are not a doctor yet, you are just a medical student. I'm making that firm distinction because clinicians, all they are supposed to do is to be in the hospital. As a medical student, you still have to learn stuff. You know, there's a famous quote in the beginning of um, um, a surgical text that says that he who practices medicine without um, reading goes is is one who is like one who is you know sailing in an uncharted waters, and he who practices medicine without patience does not go to sea at all. What that tells you is that it's important to have stuff, and as well it's important, it's also important to go for you know your clinical activities so that you can have you know bedside knowledge. Now. At what proportion should you put this? I strongly suggest, as a medical student, to put it around 30-70. 30 30% of your energy and time should be put into your clinical um, activities. Why 70% of your time should be put into academics where you should learn the stuff. Later on in your surgery, um, senior surgical posting, you can switch it. 
but for now you still have to learn the reason why is when you go for the world round they're going to ask you 10 courses of acute abdomen and you cannot know 10 courses of acute abdomen from pathology the best way to know it is from the textbooks and the only way to get that knowledge from the textbook into your brain is by reading the textbook and that's why it's important to set your priorities right at 70 percent of your time and energy to academic activities and at, and at least and at least not less than 30 percent of your energy to clinical activities at least for s1 what this translates to is at least two calls per week you have to go to the A&B as part of your clinical activities two calls per week okay let me just say um, shed a little bit of light um, um, on the clinical activities there are various surgical units you are going to be divided the whole class will be divided into two medicine and surgery and then surgery will be divided into um, various surgical subunits which will be general surgery mostly you guys will be in those particular sub specialties after which you rotate in two weeks every two weeks you rotate now and there will be pediatric surgery there will be general surgery there will be urology however when you are in these sub specialties you'll be learning um surgical stuff generally and then you will follow these doctors for clinical activities such as going to clinic where they see patients that are coming from home that have complaints and which is the very best place to get your clock in where you have to clock patients and present meanwhile there's another video on how to clock and how to do examination um, i hope you have time to check that so that you can know how to clock and how to examine patients even before stepping your feet into the um, hospital so um you where you so there'll be clinic there'll be world rounds where the surgeons go from bed to bed seeing the patients they've admitted and they've you know probably done surgeries for and look at their progress so you'll be following them for those activities there will be ground round where all the social shouts come together and discuss um, their um, activities their mortalities and their morbidities um, which is a very interesting avenue to you know listen to esoteric stuff anyway there'll be all those activities and then there'll be also um, calls what I mean by calls are um, the odd hours of the day from 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. where you have to go to the A and E where the action as they say the action happens a, a huge proportion of um you know um on the goal learning happens in the a and e and calls are every day but as a medical student if you go for calls every day you would not read because you might go for calls from 4 5 pm and stay quite late into you know the night and then when you come back your bed will be calling you to be dragging you like an enzyme to a substrate but you have to still study so that's why I'm telling you 30% of your energy and time to clinical activities, 70% to your books. As you go higher in surgery, you'll be able to switch the proportion so that by then you have, you know, some appreciable amount of surgical knowledge and then you can balance it, you know, with your academics and clinical activities. I hope that is very, very clear. So this is supposed to give you just a brief idea of how your surgery posting is going to go. When you get to 500 level, there will be another video. On a review of S2 and then sub, um, subsequently in S3 there will be another video that will orient you and guide you once again so guys thank you for listening and if you enjoyed it share with your you know colleagues thank you very much for listening